Virgin Most Powerful Radio, sharing the gospel with clarity and charity. I'm a soldier for Christ. I'm a soldier for Christ. I'm a soldier. No, they'll never take us under because we're bringing truth like thunder. Raining on your speakers like a ton of bricks. Hold the cross high because we're Catholics. Fight the good fight with the truth. Stand tall with the truth. I'm a warrior for Christ. I'm in love with the truth. Love God. Save souls. Slay error. Go stronger. Eighty nine, my faithfulness and my mercy shall be with him. What comforting thoughts! This is the Terry and Jesse show, full time, full, full contact. contact Catholic radio. <laughs> Two men on duty for Jesus Christ. Terry, I'm duty. Are you on duty? Absolutely, I'm reporting for duty, sir. And Jess, I'm so blessed. I mean, I think of the situation that we have. God gave us another day to serve Him, and we're going to be praying for Colby, who actually died in a tragic uh, accident. Kobe Bryant, the basketball star. We're going to be, as a matter of fact, Jess, why don't we, why don't you lead a prayer right away before we get into the gospel, praying for his repose of his soul and those In the name of the Father, died. Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Eternal rest granted to Kobe Bryant and his daughter, O Lord, and, let, and, and all those other seven yep. other people, and let your perpetual light shine upon them. Amen. In the soul of Kobe Bryant, his daughter, and the seven other people, through the mercy of God, Rest in peace. Amen. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord Jesus, have mercy on his soul. And Jesse, Amen. we're going to talk more about that. And that's the greatest thing we can do for anybody who dies. I don't need to wear his T-shirt. I need to have masses offered for him and to pray for his soul, especially when relatives die. It's so important that we uh, do the spiritual works of mercy. Jess, let's talk yes. about the gospel. The gospel of Mark. I, Jess, have you noticed almost every day we've been reading stuff about spiritual warfare, dude? I mean, and then someone's going to tell me the devil doesn't exist. What? <laughs> read the book, brother. Read it. It's in the book. Oh, God. All right, well, let's read it from Mark chapter 3, verse 22 to 30. Okay, here we go. Let's take it uh, verse by verse. Yep. The scribes who had come from Jerusalem, said of Jesus, he is possessed. No, there's that word. That's where we get the word from. That's right. He is possessed by Beelzebul and by the prince of demons. He drives out demons. Summoning them, he began to speak to them in, a parable, in, in parables. How can Satan drive out Satan? If a kingdom is divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. And if a house is divided against itself, that house will not be able to stand. And if Satan has risen up against himself and is divided, he cannot stand. That is the end of him. But no one can enter a strong man's house. That's a reference to the devil, the strong man. Mm -hmm. To plunder his property unless he first ties, unless he first ties up the strong man. That word tie, that's where you get these Catholic exorcism prayers that say, I bind the demon. That comes from that Greek word there, tie or bind. Then he can plunder his house. In other words, who's the, who's the stronger man who binds the strong man's house? It's Jesus. Amen. That's, who, he, that's, that's the only one that can do it. Yep. Then, it says, then he can plunder his house. Amen, I say to you, all sins and all blasphemies that people utter will be forgiven then, but whoever blasphemes against the Holy Spirit will never have forgiveness, but is guilty of an everlasting sin. For they had said he has an unclean spirit, the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. A couple points I just want to make. Um, Beelzebul. So who is that? That was a pagan god back at the time of Christ in the Old Testament. In fact, it was a time of, it was a time of uh, the time of Elijah. He was uh, there was a city called Ekron, and he was the god that was worshipped by at Ekron in the Old Testament. And the scribes used this title Beelzebul as a title for Satan, and. Uh, and amongst uh, amongst the Catholic Church, amongst exorcists, they'll tell you that there's stronger demons and there's weaker demons. Also notice what it says there about in twenty verses 24 and 25, the way the scribes are trying to say that Jesus' power, it, you know, he's like a sorcerer from Satan. That's what they're trying to say, that, that he gets his power from Satan. But Jesus responds to that, me saying, look it, man, if if the devil works against the devil... Uh, how are you going to be able to conquer him? 
So the scribes and Pharisees, by ascribing the power of Jesus to Satan, the scribes are revealing their own collaboration with the devil's kingdom because Satan's house will fall. Why? Because Christ will conquer him, not because his demons are weakened by divisions within their ranks. And notice also about that eternal sin, the sin of blasphemy of the Holy Spirit. The scribes, they utter blasphemy by attributing to Satan what is actually the work of the Holy Spirit. And their, sin's not, their, their sin is not forgivable in principle because, what, because of the rebellion, because of their hardness of heart. In other words, their sin is impardonable because their hearts are hardened, they don't have contrition, they don't have repentance. They're like, they have like the heart of Pharaoh, and they're attributing things to Satan that belong to God. This is probably the worst thing that you can do uh, in, in terms of uh, the first commandment, the sin against of blasphemy. And Jesse, just to add to that, it seems to me that our culture right now is putting a big emphasis on the demonic to a point where we're worshiping the devil, Jess. Let's face it. Am I right or wrong on that? Terry, they have after-school satanic uh, program there you go to take care of your kids yep they have satan coloring books right go. now in catholic schools yep. they have a lot of satan series on television the one of them being lucifer and many others you got satanic statues being put in public parks and in monuments you have satanic quote-unquote christmas nativity scenes uh, yeah, no, you've got black masses being celebrated on college campuses. That's right. That's right. Uh, uh, you have Satanists that are going to city council meetings and that are saying, hey, we want to get in line and do the invocation because you let the Presbyterians and the Catholics. Yeah, those are all Jews. facts. Yeah. So, the, yeah, the, the, without a doubt, Terry, there's a rise in Satanism like we've never seen before in our life. And that's why I want to bring Bishop Sheen into the room. <laughs> Oh, Sheen ahead. Bishop Sheen's going to talk about the family because we know St. John Paul II said the way the family goes is the way the culture goes. Check this out, Jess. It's about the family and the rosary. He says this, in life is worth living. He says, children become as beads in the great rosary of love, chaining father and mother together in the sweetness slavery of all, which is the love of a family and the happiness of a home. What is that message? The rosary, the family rosary. What did Father Peyton say? The family that prays together stays together. And Jess, what do we say? One of our five stones at the end of every show, it's the rosary for world peace. Uh, you know, we have all this crummy stuff going on that Jess just talked about, the satanic influence. What's our recourse? Our lady, man, the rosary. And so that's, that's right. why I think Bishop Sheen nailed it when he said the family, the rosary, please I plead with everyone listening, especially dads. You know what, dude? You're not a man, okay, without praying the daily rosary. Jess, I'm just going to call it that way. I've said that at men's conferences. Why? Because without dad leading family prayer, the chances of your kids staying Catholic are small. So I want to encourage all of our men, especially, and moms and families to pray that daily rosary. Terry, I'll tell you why it's also so important, because the the the... God wants to bless the families, but where does he bless? How does he bless the families? He blesses them through the Father. That's in Ephesians 3.15. So don't argue with me. Argue with the Bible. <laughs> Amen, brother. And by the same token, if God blesses people through the Father, Ephesians 3.15, then I, I, I've also heard that the opposite is true. Exorcists will teach officially that the point of entry into a family, yep. the diabolical enters the family through the Father. Right through the Father's mortal sins, through the Father's indifference, his lukewarmness, his not living in a state of grace, that leaves the family unprotected from the diabolical. So, Terry, you are absolutely spot on with Catholic teaching on uh, on Scripture and healing and exorcism. Jesse, I, Terry, got, yeah. I got some good Go news that you're, you haven't heard, maybe. And because you've been so busy, out of, you've been running all over the country proclaiming the gospel. But I want to give this good news. President Trump just came out with a statement that the government is going to have a right to have for people to write to pray in public schools. You know how you hear about football games where they want to pray the football team and they say, you can't wow. do that. Trump says, yes, you can. And so here's my point, <laughs> Jess. 
I was used to the previous. We got a friend in the White House, Terry. That's we got a friend. my point, man. Not just pro life for abortion, but he's actually saying, "You guys want to pray?" Like one girl said, "Somebody died like Colby." Can you imagine the public schools and some students says, "Can we pray a prayer for for um, uh, Colby's death? He just died over the weekend, and we want to say a prayer." And they're going to say, "You can't do it." Well, President Trump says. Those days are gone because he's making it federal law <laughs> that kids and, and teachers and coaches can pray. Thanks be to Praise God. Praise the Lord. Thanks for sharing that, Terry. Is it through executive order? Yes, an executive order. Good. And, and, and if you go to YouTube, you can actually watch his presentation. He brings up a, a, a little you know, high school student who said, we were, we were told we couldn't pray for my friend who got in a car accident. And they said, if you do, pray behind the screen, but don't let anybody see you. And Trump said, those days are gone, sweetheart. I'm making it clear that you can pray in school anytime you want. I thought, wow, that's good news, Jess. Terry, St. Angela, Angela Marisi, oh, yeah. he's the saint of the day. Pray for us. The Ursuline sisters, yep. Yeah, she was orphaned at the age of 10. Uh, Angela was led to embrace the vocation of, of a Franciscan tertiary. Yep. She offered herself in prayer for her sister, who had died without the comfort of the final sacraments. And it's said that about Angela Marisi that a vision confirmed that her sister's presence was among the saints in heaven. Yep. Later, a second vision awakened in, in Angela Marisi, and her, uh, it, uh, it awakened her a desire to form a company of virgins to serve God. That's right. So St. Angela Marisi, she ministered to these unmarried young women in Brescia, Italy, yep. and she proposed a form of life based on their free response to God through, through being espoused to him, being awesome. the bride of Christ. Awesome. And so the group of women she gathered for this work was established as a congregation in the Catholic Church of the Ursuline Sisters. After her death in 1540, St. Angela Marisi, pray for us. Up next, we're going to talk about Colby Bryant's death in that helicopter crash. We're going to give you some information that you have not heard anywhere else on the Terry and Jesse Show at Virgin Most Powerful Radio. Brothers and sisters in Christ, this is Jesse Romero. Join me on a pilgrimage of faith and discovery to Poland for the 100th year anniversary of the birth of St. John Paul II in May of 2020. Together we'll experience the faith, beauty, and culture of Poland and become imbibed with the spirit of John Paul II. We'll visit the town of Wadowice, where John Paul was born, and the city of Krakow, where he was ordained and later became bishop. We'll also travel to Jasnogora and visit Our Lady of Czestochowa, And we'll have a chance to venerate the original image of the merciful Jesus at St. Faustina's convent and the city that St. Maximilian Kolbe built for the Immaculata. Finally, we'll pay a visit to Auschwitz, where St. Maximilian Kolbe was martyred. This is the once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to worship and discover your own faith at places where St. John Paul II grew in his own love for our Lord. For more information or how to join this pilgrimage, visit my website at jesseromero.com. Leviticus 11.44 says, Consecrate yourselves and be holy, because I am holy. St. Vincent Pilate said, You must be holy in the way God asks you to be holy. God does not ask you to be a Trappist monk or a hermit. He wants you to sanctify the world and your everyday life. May God show us the path to holiness and help us to follow it all the days of our life. This is Terry Barber. I want to thank you for your support here at Virgin Most Powerful Radio. Here's an easy way to do it. If you're going to sell or buy a house, call Real Estate for Life, 877-543-3871, because they're going to get you a Christ-centered agent to purchase your home or to sell your home. And at the close of escrow, a portion of his commission goes right back to Virgin Most Powerful Radio. Call 877-543-3871. Thank you so much for your support. Welcome back to the Terry and Jesse Show. 
To join the conversation, call 888-526-2151. Now, here's Terry and Jesse. Red at PG, praise God. <laughs> Terry, uh, a fellow Catholic brother passed away. He did. Uh, Colby Bryan. Not famous. Uh, several people died in a helicopter crash. I think the L.A. Sheriff's Department said it was nine people. Yeah. Uh, Sheriff Alex Villanueva, yeah. along with Colby Bryant and his one of his, I think, his second to the oldest daughter. Yeah, 13. Mm-hmm. And uh, and Terry, you know, like all of us, yeah, no. uh, all, all of us as men, we all have what I would call clay feet. Oh, yeah. What, what oh. I mean by that is that uh, last time I checked, uh, the Bible says all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Last, last time I checked my Bible, Romans 3.23. It still says, says that, brother. Yeah, I don't, I, don't think, I don't think God's deleted that verse. No expiration date. Yeah, so um, we're all sinners. That's established. Yep. We're not here to canonize anybody, but I will say this, that in the last couple of years, yep. without a doubt, Kobe Bryant, like a lot of guys, they lose their way, okay? They get sidetracked. He was sidetracked in the world of sports. Yeah, it was famous. I mean, yeah, I mean, it, be, it became to him the centerpiece of his life. He was, he was at the top of his game for yep. years. Yep. And it probably became, you know, uh, uh, speaking objectively, probably became kind of an idol in his life. As a result of that, you lose track. Uh, the temptations are even greater when you're at that type of a stature. And and he took had some missteps, like all of us men have missteps, different sins. But the fact is, Terry, he did return back to his Catholic faith. Praise God. That's one of the things that, and that's all I care for. I don't care. Like, it, it, you know, Jesus would tell me, hey, anybody without sin, throw the first stone. Right. I, I have, I'd have to drop my stones, Terry. I'm not going to dro- throw a stone at anybody. I'm going to plead mercy for everybody and plead God's grace because I hope that's what, that's what I get at the judgment. But, Terry, what do you have to say? Well, about I just want to say this, Jesse, that there's ten commandments. And I'm going to ask all of our listeners, have we, have you, Jesse Romero, Terry Barber, any of our listeners ever committed a sin against any of those ten commandments? I think most people, Jess, are going to say yes, because I don't think anybody's immaculately conceived. So what we have is confession. And from what I gather from these articles, Colby Bryant had a priest in Orange County who said two things. One, he was at Mass the morning that he died. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. Now, I'm glad he was with his daughter. I'm glad, because that's his obligation, and he fulfilled it. So he, if he received the body, body, blood, and soul, and divinity of Jesus Christ, praise God, he did that. But he said when he, times were tough in this article, this is how he came back to his faith when he had all kinds of scandal going on. And you know what that happens, Jesse? Most people who were raised Catholic, as he said, you go back to your roots, you go back to your fundamentals when you fall. So my question is, did Colby fall? Did anybody? My question is, did you get up? And Colby got up, Jesse, and he took and embraced his faith from what the article points out, and the priest said that. Now, Dr. Scott Hahn made a comment on social media saying that he knew the priest, and I think you also know this priest. So I met him. Yeah. This is not just hearsay, okay, Jess? These are the facts. Colby was at Mass. He took his obligation to go to Mass on Sunday with his family seriously. Now, God is his judge, but i got to tell you one thing. Nobody gets out alive. What's the message to us, to me, is life is short and eternity is forever. And, Jess, this is my message. Anyone out there right now, do you have a guarantee tomorrow you'll be alive, Jesse Romero, Terry Barber? No. So why do we say be in the state of grace when you meet God? Because that's the, what you want. That's our goal in life. So I hope and pray he did. And if he didn't, we're praying for his soul and his, uh, his daughter's soul and all those people that die. We should be doing this every day. Because you know what Mondays are dedicated for, Jesse? You know this. But every Monday, it's, the, it's for the souls in purgatory. See, Tuesday's your guardian angel day. Every day is defined by the church as having a significance. Now, isn't it interesting we prayed for Colby today on Monday, the day that we're supposed to pray for the poor souls in purgatory. So what's my message? My message is, what did this make me? I mean, I'm not going to go down, Jesse. I can drive 30 minutes and be down at the Staples Center with a bunch of people with T-shirts of Colby and crying. And crying. No! I'm going to have masses. I, this morning, guess, who's, guess who I offered at my mass? Colby Bryant. Colby Bryant. What can you do, our listener? Don't put his T-shirt Offer a mass on. Offer a rosary or what, for him. Ex- that's what I'm saying. What's He's more He's a Catholic efficacious? brother, guys. Exactly. He's a Catholic brother. You nailed it, Jess. And here's, you know, and, and Terry. Tell me. 
I know some people. You and have some. You'll have some. Uh, you know, detractors out oh, there. Yeah. They're always trying. They're always Indian trying people. to see oh. the glass half empty instead yeah. of half full. They're going to say, "Well, you know, in times past, he's made a lot of these statements. You know, pro LGBT, and yeah. he came out on Ellen DeGeneres show, and yeah. and uh, you know, he was uh, talking about some of the guys that were homosexuals in uh, and and the NF and NBA, and saying that, uh, yeah, hey, you know what? That's good that they came out. You know." And, Here's the point that I'm making. Tell me. I said it. We're all sinners. Okay? Has he committed sins? Of course. So have I. Yeah. I get the, but here's the point that I'm making. The point that I'm making, I'm not looking at his sins because I have too many of them myself. I just, I always have to go back to that verse when people start. Fo- Psalm 130, verse 3. You nailed it. It says, if thou, Scott Hahn loves to quote he on people. He, he, this is the one he always quotes when people start throwing rocks. He says, Psalm 130, verse 3. If thou, O Lord, shouldst mark iniquities, Lord, who can stand? Yeah. In other words, David just said, if God would tally up all our sins, and that would be the basis of us going to heaven, nobody would go to heaven. That's what David, King David just said. And so, of course, he had missteps. The point I'm focusing is on the fact that without a doubt there are priests in his life that say this man had come back to his faith and in fact, there's a good article, Terry, that there says, is. remembering Kobe Bryant formed and saved by his Catholic faith. Here's a few things that it says. This is important. It, the article. Yes. It says, okay, it says, um, few know about the role his Catholic faith played in helping him through one of his darkest hours. Born in Philadelphia, Kobe Bryant was raised in a Catholic household and even spent some of his youth in Italy. Drafted into the NBA at the age of 17, he eventually married Vanessa Lane, at St. Edward Roman Catholic Church in Dana Point, California. Right. Two years later, they had their first child. Bryant was at the top of his game, and everything seemed to be heading in the direction of his dreams. Then he made a big mistake. In 2003, Kobe Bryant was accused of raping a woman in his hotel room. We all know what that's about. Right. But then he, this, here's what he says. He says, yet during one of the darkest moments of his life, his wife is filing for a divorce. You know, his reputation has been tarnished. A lot of sponsors are abandoning him. He says, during the darkest moments of my life, and he has this, you know, this rape uh, allegation uh, hanging over his head, a, right. a lawsuit. He said this, Kobe Bryant, I return to my Catholic faith. In an interview in 2015, he said this, the one thing that really helped me during that process, yep. I'm Catholic. I grew up Catholic. My kids are Catholic. Right. Was talking to a Catholic priest. Good man. And, and Terry, Excellent. it was there. He says in the article, it says, that was the turning point. The fatherly counsel of the Catholic priest that, that in, probably in confession and in counsel that told him, okay, you know, because a little, probably Kobe was probably beating up on himself on his sins. You know what I'm saying? Right, of course. And the priest says, let it go, move on. Okay? Right. Let it go, move on. And, and he said, by hearing that from a Catholic priest, that was the turning point in his life, Terry. And Jesse, he had other rough roads in his life, like us. His wife, they were separated for a couple of years, okay? And then after some rough years, he reconciled with his wife, and they remained married together, you know, until his death. So he he fell, but he got up, been reconciled. And now I understand they also have like an eight-month-old baby. Uh, so it's a young family that he had. And again... He was trying to get back. He got back with his wife. I commend him for that because just right now, you know what the easy way out is? I'm, I'm sure some of his friends told him that. You know what I bet? All, Terry, all the NBA guys are on their second or third exactly. marriage. Exactly. That's where I'm going. And and Kobe Bryant nope. has been married to this lady since he was in his early yep. 20s. Yep. Now, let me, how many professional players Not many. stay with the same wife that they married to a, 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 as a young man? Very, very, and, or politicians for that matter, Terry. No, a, and, a, and, and I'll throw another mix. Tell me. Kobe Bryant is black. Yep. I mean, blacks have the highest divorce rate. Kobe could have just said, you know what, man, you know, that's kind of, that's, you know, that's kind of part of the culture and stuff. We leave our wives after a couple of years. Kobe Bryant, Terry, has fought against the culture, against the pressure. Leave your wife. You know what? Move on. Right. You know, find somebody else. So what? You got caught. You know, this is what men do. Professional athletes. Yep. And this is, you know, the black culture. This is what's prevalent in the black culture as well. He's gone against the grain, Terry, and you know why I think? Because it's his Catholic faith. Exactly. That's you given it. him that it's given him that that ability to say, you know what? I gotta be different. And and, and Terry, uh there's a, a a friend of 
of his father, Brandon Dang. Yeah. I've met him before. Oh, yeah. yeah. I've met him one time. Uh, he's a friend of Ruben Nava. He, Ruben, my partner on Jesus 911. Yep. Father Brandon Dang posted on Instagram yep. that he says that uh, he's now the vocation director at, 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 at OC at Orange County at Christ the King Cathedral. But he, he posted on Instagram, uh, this is a devastating day in Laker Nation. Uh, it talks about growing up uh, idolizing this man, not only because of his play, but also because of his work, th- his work ethic, passion, family, and faith. And, uh, and he says, immediately drawn back to the days when I was with him and his family at his daughter's, Bianca's baptism. His daughters were amazing and beautiful people. And all he could talk about was not basketball, but his family. Col- this is a priest writing this. Yeah. Kobe was so in love in, with, his, with his family and his daughters, and that gives me a bigger love for him, which makes his loss even more devastating. And Jesse, he had an attitude of gratitude because he started his Kobe and Vanessa Bryant Foundation after that. And what was it dedicated to doing? Helping young people in need, encouraging development of physical and social skills through sports and assisting the homeless. Here's a guy who makes a lot of money, and you know he could say, well, I don't care about those guys. Who cares? They're... No, he realized, that, I hope, this is, I'm assuming, yeah. that he had so many re- resources and that he was willing to share it with others. And so uh, I only say this, I'm not canonizing anybody, okay, because... Look at the sins we all have. We pray, we're praying, we're for, praying him. for his soul, but we're also acknowledging that there was a metanoia in his life, Jesse. There was a, there was a turning away from sin and saying, i got to go back to my Catholic roots, and I would encourage anyone to acknowledge that and say, let's pray as a brother Catholic who died for his soul by having masses offered, praying your rosary. Yes. I mean, this idea, Jesse, of going down to the, the, uh, the Staples Center and spending the whole night and, and just talking about Colby. I understand there's a, you got to talk it out. But you know what's more efficacious, folks? Praying for the repose of his soul because last time I looked, nobody gets out alive. What's the message again for me? Life is short and eternity is forever. That's right, Terry. And one of the things I think Colby Bryant right now at, at his oh, judgment. Oh, yeah, check this out. And I believe, you know, I believe that, that, that again, th- I'm going to make some connections. Oh, yeah. A lot of ifs, because only God knows everything. That's right. Apparently, he went to Holy Mass this morning, which shows that he Sunday was taking morning. his Sunday obligation seriously because he had a commitment to go to this tournament after. But he went to Holy Mass this morning. So instead of saying, hey, I got an all-day tournament. I'm a superstar. They're waiting for me. I'm the MC. Uh, I'm not going to go to Mass Sunday. God will understand. No, he went. So Kobe Bryant, now he received, I'm going to assume he received the Eucharist in a, in a state of grace. We know the promises of the Eucharist. If he died, Terry, with the body, blood, soul, and divinity of, in his, of Christ in his body, in his soul, as he was dying and he was in a state of grace, Terry, we will see the man once again. I, I, there will be some purification, but we will see him again. Kobe Bryant, God bless you. Lord, have mercy on him. Amen. This is Matthew Arnold for Virgin Most Powerful Radio. This March, VMPR, in association with the Catholic Resource Center, will be hosting a special conference for the Adoramus Society. Adoramus at the Triduum, a conference on the spirituality of the Triduum liturgies. Featuring speakers Father Joseph Fessio, Dr. Anthony Lillis, and Christopher Carstens, addressing such topics as developing a liturgical spirituality, the spirituality of Holy Thursday, the spirituality of Good Friday, and the spirituality of the Paschal Vigil and Easter season. It all takes place March 14, 2020, at the historic Sacred Heart Chapel at 381 West Center Street, Covina, California, 91723. You can register online at vmpr.org or call now at 877-526-2151 to reserve your seat today. For Adoramus at the Triduum. This is Terry Barber. I want to thank you for supporting Virgin Most Powerful Radio. And here's an easy way to support us by going to smile.amazon.com 
and type in Catholic Resource Center or Virgin Most Powerful Radio. And when you log in your Amazon account and you purchase products, a portion of it will go right back in supporting Virgin Most Powerful Radio. And it doesn't cost you a dime. I want to thank you ahead of time because that supports us year-round. May God bless you and your family. This is Terry Barber. I want to thank you for your support here at Virgin Most Powerful Radio. Here's an easy way to do it. If you're going to sell or buy a house, call Real Estate for Life, 877-543-3871. Because they're going to get you a Christ-centered agent to purchase your home or to sell your home. And at the close of escrow, a portion of his commission goes right back to Virgin Most Powerful Radio. Call 877-543-3871. Thank you so much for your support. Welcome back to the Terry and Jesse Show. To join the conversation, call 888-526-2151. Now, here's Terry and Jesse. The pro-life movement is fully operational, and the engine is a fine-tuned engine, and all the tires are inflated, but the women's marches around the country seem to have three flat tires. (laughs) Well, I'll tell you, there's three reasons why the 2020 Women's March has failed all over the country. All the numbers are down. Well, first of all, there's an election year. There's also the impeachment that's going on of a pro-life president and the growing polarization over abortion. This should have served to energize the angry feminist minority. However, the march with the theme, Women Rising, might have been better themed, Numbers Falling, because less than 10,000 women feminists showed up for the January 18th march around the White House, and similar results were reported all over there were fewer sister marches in major cities. Terry, this this uh, this movement is losing steam. This 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 whole uh, you remember back in the seventies, Terry? There was a song by this one feminist. Uh, it was uh, I, I I am women, watch me roar. I, her name was Helen Reddy. Yeah, she was a pop singer in the seventies. She sung she sung I am strong, I am invisible, I am invincible, I am woman. Well, guess what, Terry? These women's marches that are anti-Christian are are failing all over the country because they're not recruiting anybody because most women that are saying these older ladies that are promoting this, they're off the rails. I can't hear Terry. I can't hear Terry. I'll keep on talking because I can't hear Terry. Terry, tell me when I can hear you. So. Here's the point that I'm making. The numbers of these women marches around the country, they're dropping. There was, I guess, a total of 18 around the country. And uh, they they claimed that there was going to be 408 women's marches around the country. Well, guess what? There was 18 around the country. And so uh, uh, the fact is, these marches are failing because they're not inclusive. Guess what? These marches aren't about women. It's about ideology. It's about liberalism 101. Absolutely. In other words, the leadership cannot agree on what it means to be a woman. Its feminist roots automatically exclude huge numbers of women like moms with a bunch of kids, pro-lifers. You know, if you disagree with, with these women on key issues like abortion, same-sex marriage, transgenderism, and the, the mom and dad family, well, guess what? You're not invited to these marches, so this lack of inclusivity is what's alienating many women around the country for seeing these gr- women who they are. This is a liberal woman's group with an agenda, and they know if you're traditional, orthodox, conservative, you're, you're not invited. Jesse, and women know that. Absolutely. Can you hear me now, Jess? Yeah. Okay, for- here's what's happening, too. At these marches, I watched on YouTube a lot of interviews with these women. People just saying, so tell me, why are you here? And they, oh, yeah, we're here for women's rights. And they go, well, did you know the number one cause for the deaths of women in this country? And they go, was it cancer? Is it this, that? No, it's abortion. Half the women that are, and the babies that are born, are unborn, are baby, are women. And they just go like, what? That's not true. Uh, anyhow, they're not, they're not uh, viable. They're not 
uh, you know, human beings. See, here's the point. He called them on it. They're for women? Really? What about un- unborn women? Well, obviously they're not. And here's the other thing, Jesse, that I think there's a reason why they're losing their numbers. You gave some good reasons, but you want me to tell you one more reason that I believe? There's a guy sitting in the, in the uh, president of the United States office, and he's leading the charge for pro-life efforts. And you know what that's doing? It's igniting people. And you know what it's doing to the other side? They want to get rid of them. They gotta, they're, they're putting their energy towards impeachment and all kinds of other things to, to undermine this pro-life president. And so their numbers are going down. So I just believe, and I'm going to be honest, with you, I'm not a politician, I'm not a, but you know what I am? I'm voting with my Catholic faith, and I like what I see. I say that this man, President Trump, is the most pro-life president, and it's changing the courts. He's changing judges. We're making, finally, after eight years of Mr. Obama, which was just the opposite, the the, the pendulum is going back towards life. And I would just say that's why their numbers are down. Another reason that their numbers are down, which is good, Terry, because it shows the the diabolical infiltration in the women's movement. Oh, yeah. There's a lot of infighting. Big time. So, you know, you have have anti-Semites there. You have uh, people that are that are just you know pushing the Muslim uh, you know, pr- pr- promote like like uh, Linda Sarsour, she's one of the co-founding members. She's a Muslim. She just stepped down because again they're just not agreeing politically, and so uh, all this infighting, which is, again is, this is just a sign of the diabolical. This is another reason why this 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 march they they were projecting that there was going to be over two hundred people around the country, two hundred marches. There was only eighteen. And and people are also finding out that there's an ideology. It's not about women. Nope. It's not about women. It's about liberalism. It's about liberal women's issues. Yep. If you're a liberal, then they should call it what it is. The liberal women's march issue. But they don't. They call it the women's march. No. If you're a woman who's traditional, conservative, and orthodox, if you're not invited to, to the game. And so as a result of the fact that there's infighting and that there's the... People are just saying, you know, just let the let the toothpaste out of the tube. This is a liberal women's issue march, and, uh, and for example, this year some of the protesters were were carrying signs about uh, this anti-war theme about having they were protesting the killing of this terrorist leader, you know, uh, Suleimani. Unbelievable. And, and uh, in 2020, some of the other major themes that these women were protesting. Abortion, which is constantly what you know, they're always uh, yeah. protesting that uh, the fact that we're trying to stop abortion, but they were also protesting about immigration and climate change, and also gun violence and 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 other issues, Terry, that have nothing to do with women's issues, and so everybody sees right through this. Oh yeah, they're also marching about climate change and about uh, you know unbridled sexuality. You know mm-hmm. the whole the whole uh, you know I, I can do whatever I want with my body. So, Terry, these are revolutionists, li- liberal revolutionists. These are not the average American women that want to raise kids, love their husband, love their God, and get to heaven. And, you know, Jesse, I don't know of any major media outlets that are going to report what you just said. Really, I don't. Do you, do you know of any other medias that are coming out and saying all this? No, not, not with that type of clarity. No. 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 And so this is why, again— Other I- than Catholic, Catholic independent medias— Yes. Not Catholic medias that no. are beholden to the, the bishops. They won't say this either. No, that's true. And so this is why it's important to get the message out. And this is why it's important for us to stand up for life in all of its stages. Jesse, I just came back from visiting uh, an uncle and aunt, my godfather and godmother. They're in their 90s. And so I went into one of these rest homes, and uh, I saw so many elderly people there, and I got the chance to to minister to them. But I thought of that. The long-born and the short-born, the babies in the womb and the elderly, uh, man, we're, we're treating some of these, we're acting like unless you're healthy, unless you can defend for yourself, then forget it. You're not worthy to receive medical attention. You're not even re- worthy to be alive. And I think that uh, Mother Teresa nailed it when she said, let me, let me tell you how you can monitor your, your uh, culture, how you treat the least in it. And I think right now, the unborn baby and the elderly are being treated poorly in our country. Another reason why these women marches are imploding and they're not 
they're, they're losing numbers, mm-hmm. they're bleeding out very fast, is because their message is negative. Nobody wants to commit their life to a negative message and march around for a negative message. In other words, this this morbid negativity that they promote, they have this revolutionary mindset, and uh, they they don't have they don't promote a bright future. Uh, they don't inspire people. So the tone of the women's march is, is it's a dark tone. It's full of despair. And one of the reasons for the acrimony is that that's in the leadership of these women's marches is that it's, it's issue driven. Yeah. It's a personal obsession against a pro-life president, Donald Trump. And so as everybody knows, personal fights can be exhausting. So, the, you know, the, 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 these, these women, uh, their message is negative, and so the the liberal grassroots, Terry, they're just burning out, and, just, and, and that's why the numbers are falling across the country, because it's hard to speak of women rising, you know, when only a few show up, and once again, the, the same negative messages year after year. Have you noticed also, many of these women that go to these marches, it's all about them. When you bring up an issue like unborn babies, it's like, I could care less about abortion, that's not my problem. It's not me. I, so who cares? And so that's one of the elements, too. It's a selfish movement because it's all about me. Jesse, when we come back, this is an amazing, uh, amazing topic. Fifteen mortal sins Catholics are frequently missing in their confession. Whoa, this is like an examination of conscience. And what do we say all the time on the Terry and Jesse show? If you're not living with an examined conscience each day, then you're missing the boat. You're not living a christ-centered life yep even socrates says the life a, a, a life that's not exa- a life that's not yep. examined is not a life worth living yep, that's what he said hey i want to also just say thank you this is the month for our second anniversary for a virgin most powerful radio just to give you a, a thanks for that because we wouldn't be here without you our monthly donors and i'm getting probably 15 or 20 texts right now saying that a boy do this do that and you know, I had a, a story of a text here, Jesse, and I'll just, you get these all the time, but it's because of Virgin Most Powerful Radio. And what happened is this gentleman got, uh, st- said to, uh, he said, hey, check out the Terry and Jesse show. So they checked it out. His name's Ken. And uh, he says, uh, I started listening to your show, Terry. I finished your book, How to Share Your Faith with Anyone. He loved it. He said, I've been a Catholic since 1982, but shortly then left the Catholic faith and was lukewarm for 32 years. I started to attend a men's Bible study in 19, 2015, and a man, John Martinez, gave me your card to listen to the Terry and Jesse show. And that's what got me on fire for Jesus and Mary again. And uh, we went to your spiritual warfare conference, heard wow. Jesse, and he says, man, I'm in, the, I'm in right now, 100%, and I wanted to thank you. So, John... I'm thanking you, brother, for coming back to Jesus. Cause that's and reporting for duty. Exactly, because that's what we want to do. We want to share the good news of Jesus Christ and his church. We'll be back with much more on the Terry and Jesse Show on Virgin Most Powerful Radio. Hello, this is Terry Barber with the Terry and Jesse Show. I'm here with Gil already. He is the president of the Catholic Men's Fellowship of California. Gil, we got a men's conference coming up. I appreciate you having me on, Terry, to share about our Rise Up, O Men of God, the Church for You Does Wait, Super Saturday Conference, and it's Saturday, March 28th in Covina at Sacred Heart Catholic Church, 344 West Workman Street in Covina, California. Who are the speakers? We have some great speakers lined up. We have Steve Ruda, former captain of the L.A. Fire Department. He's dynamic. Mm -hmm. He's energetic. He will really keep the conference moving. We have Monsignor Tim Nichols, the pastor from St. John Vianney. He's He's dynamic. Mark McElrath, Father Darren Merlino, a trained exorcist. Charlie Eshelman, a past Navy SEAL. We have Deacon Omar Uriati, who is from our parish, St. Louis de Marillac, and Father Joseph Shea. And I'll be there myself, giving a little plug for Virgin Most Powerful. You can reach us at catholicmen.org. Tickets are on sale there. Just follow the link. Tickets are on sale at eventbrite.com. 
Just be sure to get your tickets now till the 31st for $35 and $45 after that till the day of the conference. Sign up for this men's conference. Call Gil at 626-841-9090. I'll be sure to answer your call and give you all the information you need for the Rise Up, O Men of God, For You, The Church Does Wait conference. Thank you, Terry. Appreciate your help. God bless you. Jesus said this to the apostles Barber. in Luke chapter 10, for your support who, here at Virgin Most Powerful Radio. Here's an easy way to do it. If you're going to sell or buy a house, call Real Estate for Life, 877-543-3871, because they're going to get you a Christ-centered agent to purchase your home or to sell your home. And at the close of escrow, a portion of his commission goes right back to Virgin Most Powerful Radio. Call 877-543-3871. Thank you so much for your support. Welcome back to the Terry and Jesse Show. To join the conversation, call 888 526 2151. Now, here's Terry and Jesse. Terry, there's a friend of ours. The name's Father David Nick. Good priest. He's a high information Catholic priest. Yep. He's a very interesting young man. He's just he, he, 41. 40. Yeah. 40. Yeah. He's a, he, he's a, he's, he has a real strong devotion to the contemplative life. He's, in fact, he's a hermit. Exactly. He's the hermit of the Diocese of Denver, Colorado. Right. Uh, that's exactly his position. And, uh, and so he just, his life is just basically dedicated to prayer and penance and the, and the, and the Mass. He has a preference for the Latin Mass, but he, he, he's very deep in, in theology. Uh, he reads all the right guys, and he's just very well read. He put out an article, Terry. That I mean, I I, I thought Saint I thought Saint Alphonsus Liguori wrote this article. You know, <laughs> moral theologian. Yeah, it's called Fifteen Mortal Sins Catholics Are Frequently Missing in Their Confessions." It's it's meaty. We're only going to get through the first sentence of each of sin. You're going to have to read it on your own. So go to virginmostpowerful.org or jesseromero.com and download the article. Mm-hmm. Copy it onto a word file. It's one of those articles. Maybe to a men's group, take it to your men's group right. for your personal time. Say, yeah, I'm going to read this in front of the Blessed Sacrament and, and challenge yourself. Tell you the first, what, the first sin that's frequently missing in confessions is the sin of father. I'm using contraception. Yep. I'm using condoms. Father, I'm, I, 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 I'm using the IVF or I, you know, I've used, uh, what's it called? Uh, in vitro fertilization. Father, I, I'm using an IUD. Uh, father, I'm using the pill or father, I just had an abortion. That's a, that's a sin that's frequently missing in confession. Yeah, see, I want to. I, I don't mean to have you not. Say, I mean to say this. You've said it on the radio before, but this is exactly when you were in your twenties. Oh yeah, come yeah. on, dude, tell us. I, the st- I, I wrote a book. It's called Catholics Wake exactly. Up. I wrote a whole chapter on did. Um, on on me and using contraception. So if you want to get to the meat of it, go to Catholics Wake Up. It's exactly. chapter two of the book. I go through the whole thing. The malformation of the priests, the Catholic schools in Southern California. A priest opens up an album, literally opens up like a like a drug dealer opens up a a, a coat and says, "Oh, album, what? Do you, and there's condoms, there's pills." I'm like, I'm like, this is a Catholic priest? Yeah, pastor, full collar, one of Mahoney's boys. He opens up an album. Yeah, it was horrible. And he says, "Okay, here's all the birth control here that I recommend." I'm look, I'm, 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 I'm remember, I'm a law information Catholic. I'm like, what? I. And and I was back then when I was 21, 22, I'll be honest with you, I thought priests walked on water. Yeah. Okay? And, and when I was, a, a, a bishops and priests, to me, they were demigods. You never questioned them. A priest said, jump off the cliff. At, when I was 21, guess what I would have done? Jumped off Jumped the cliff. Jumped off the cliff. Yeah. Okay? He says, okay, here's the, so the long and the short of it, I know about this. You've been thing. there. Yeah, I've been there. And so it wasn't until my mind was properly formed with the word of God and Amen. his teachings that, until we got off the pill. So, Terry, what's the second step? Well, and, I, to and I bring this. The next one is very common. And this is, again, Father, going based on, on uh, his experience as a priest, masturbation or pornography. Jesse, this is a fact. In 1917, Our Lady said, more souls are going to hell because of sins of the flesh than anything else. And today, there are more people watching pornography 
today than the entire world population in 1917. So you think there might be a problem with pornography, masturbation? Of course. And now I want to try and get to as many as I can here, but he gives you all the biblical teachings Right. From, you uh, have to read the article. Yeah, you own. really do. Because I, but I just wanted to make that point. And let's yeah. move on to the number third. three. He says immodesty, including wearing wearing leggings and short shorts. He uh, quotes Our Lady of Fatima. Certain fashions will be introduced that will offend our Lord very much. And just think about it. At the end of that paragraph, Father Z says this to women: Women, just meditate on the first fifteen seconds in hell. Meditate on that seven thousand degree furnace for fifteen seconds. And the realization that you just lost God forever because you thought leggings, again, you know, dressing immodest, you know, showing every part of your body, led you and countless men to hell for the sake of comfort. Am I using fear of hell to get you to stop wearing leggings? Absolutely. And, and he says, hell yes, I am. <laughs> oh, that's Father Z. Terry, what's the fourth thing? I'm, absolutely. Hey, Jesse, the fourth one is before, to to yeah, let's go, before marriage, making out or anything more passionate than that. Here, here's the bottom line. The culture says everything's okay. There's no, there's no line on any of this. So Father lays out very clearly the consequences of that. And again, what do we do when we're in mortal sin? We go to confession. So this is an examination of conscience. Let's go to number five. Number five, in marriage, anything unnatural. He quotes the two greatest theologians in this yeah. article, yeah. St. Thomas Aquinas, mm-hmm. uh, angelic doctor, and St. Alphonsus Lagorda, who's of the, the doctor church. of moral theology. Yeah. Yeah. Both teach that anal sex and oral sex in marriage is a mortal sin. Right. You can read the rest on your own, but the arguments are there. Terry? Number six, homosexual acts. All sexual sins, right? Uh, homosexual are heterosexual. Or heterosexual. Either way, are yeah. mortal sins if committed with consent. Now, he explains all this, but here's the bottom line. It's common sense, okay? God made a man a certain way and a woman a certain way, so we need to embrace that. And again, I'm not here to beat up on uh, anybody. Uh, anybody. It's just We're the all fact. Sinners. Yeah, this is what God's calling us to holiness. They're called to holiness. They're called to fidelity, just like I'm a married man. Jesse's a married man. We're called to fidelity to our wife, okay? So we can't have a sexual activity outside of our commitment to our or, wife. Or, or even perverted sexual activity. None of that. Th- that's what it's talking about here. Yes, none even of that. The perversions that's within right. marriage. Even with our wife. Yeah. St. John Paul II said it in 79. Don't lust after your wife. Boy, did that go over well. Yeah. Number seven, chronic failure to catechize your kids. Oh, boy. That's a huge one. Huge. That's a huge one. And, mo- and, and dad and mom, I mean, you guys are the primary catechist That's of the right. home. Right. Terry, what's number eight? Number eight, greatly harming someone's reputation. And again, he quotes St. Ignatius of Loyola, you know, of a, 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 it's a sin of a mortality. If it was revealed hidden sins of others, this is what he's going to be talking about. So many times people say, you mean that's a sin? Because they haven't been formed with a good catechesis, like what Jesse just said, about having your conscience formed well. So read that one. Number, what are we on now? Uh, nine? Yeah, number nine. Let's do it. Missing Sunday Mass without good reason and or a necessary work on Sunday. Okay, that's again, just, it's the, that one is the the violation of the second, the third commandment, excuse me. Yep. Again, it talks about uh, missing Mass on Sunday and doing unnecessary work. Right. So that's the, the you, it's, it's pretty meaty, so you have to go and uh, read it on your own. Terry? Yeah. Number 10, denying your workers a fair wage. Guess who writes the checks for the employees? It's me. And Jesse, if I wasn't paying you a fair price then that would be sinful. I'm denying fair wages. That's why, folks, when you donate money, I can do that. If I can't, I have to say I can't pay you anymore. We're done. So this is a very important thing for people who employ others. You've got to have a just wage. Terry, and, and in that just wage, there's there's actually four sins just worth mentioning. Oh, I should have. Yeah, go that, ahead. Yeah, Willful worth, murder. Yep, go ahead. Yeah, St. Pius X, he writes in his catechism yeah. that there's four sins that are, are known as... The, the the worst sins the, the the sins that scream to God in heaven it's number one willful murder number two the sin of sodomy number three oppression of the poor which you can say socialism communism right. um, and four defrauding laborers of their wages so you know those last two got to be highly considered by any Catholic business owners out there absolutely because these are the four the four most serious sins. 
that the church has put forth in her social church. Jesse, we got to, real quick, getting drunk or, or getting high. Why is that a sin? Because you lose your free will, okay? Yeah. So you do something stupid. Very hey. simple. Yeah, so let's, let's get on to the, uh, the next because we got, I want to get to 12, the five stones. Number yeah. 12, saying the name of Jesus in vain. Oh, that happens all the time. That's a violation of the second commandment, taking yeah. the Lord's name in vain. People don't even. And a lot of people don't even, throw, or just say, oh my God, that's, that's a, a sin. That's a venial sin at the very least. If you say it reflexively, uh, and so taking the name of Mary reflexively, like, hey, they see the football game, it threw a Hail Mary pass. Oh, we won. That's, you got to confess that. That's a venial sin at the very least, taking God's name or one of the saints' name in vain. Number 13, denying the Catholic faith, including any involvement in the occult. Jesse at Jesus 911 talks about it all the time, like tarot cards, all this stuff with New Age. It's sinful. You don't mess with it. Get, get rid of the Harry Potter books. What? I said it? Yes. It's true. Here's one that people hardly confess because they don't know about this. Yeah. Every Friday we're called to do penance. You say, no, that's before Vatican II. No, nope. it's Vatican II. Okay? Right. Vatican II calls us still to do penance on Friday, and which you can refrain from meat if you want yeah. uh, all day, uh, th- every year if you want to. That's, that's, you know, the, the new code of canon law says you have to some, have some type of penance, and a lot of people don't do any penance on Friday. And if you don't do any penance on Friday, uh, without full knowledge and deliberate consent, that's at least a venial sin. You got it. Let's get those five stones in here. What's the Terry and Jesse 15, stone. The 15th? Oh, you go ahead. Get the 15th in, Jess. Go ahead. Receiving Holy Communion with any of the above sins in your heart. Yep. Uh, Pope Pius X says, St. Pius X says, <laughs> he who goes to communion in mortal sin receives Jesus Christ, but that's not his grace. One. Yep. Moreover, he commits a sacrilege and renders himself deserving of the sentence of damnation. So St. Pius X says that if you receive Jesus Christ in the Eucharist in mortal sin, now you're damning yourself. That communion now is your damnation. And that's why we say an act of contrition before we go to Holy Communion. If you're not doing that, start now. Jesse, wow, we got it. The five yeah. stones of King da- of David with the uh, slaying of David. Of, of, go ahead, Goliath. First Samuel 17, the classic story, David and Goliath. Uh, here's what we should, here's the practical application for us as Catholic Christians. Number one, first stone, pray the, pray the rosary every single day and pray from your heart. Don't pray like you're selling automobiles. Okay. Or tacos or, okay. (laughs) Number two, go to mass every Sunday, the six holy days of obligation. That's not that. That's not too much to ask. Nope. And throughout the week, as often as possible number. And also included with that is pay visits to the blessed sacrament and give Jesus, as he told the apostles, could not you spend one hour with me? Try to, outside of the liturgy, spend an hour with Jesus in adoration. Number three, read the Bible every day. Uh, say the prayer of uh, Samuel, the, the young prophet. He said, speak, Lord, your servant is listening. How do you read the Bible every day? Simple. Okay, Vatican II's given us first reading, responsorial psalm, gospel reading. It's in your iPhone. It's on a computer. It's on a Magnificat. It takes five or to seven minutes to read it and to think about it and meditate, and it'll make you a stronger Christian man. Number four, penance every Friday. Penance, penance, penance. Number five, confession at least once a month. If you're in mortal sin, get there right now. Get in the car and go right now. Amen. Remember our lady said sins are, souls are going to hell because there's no one there to pray and make sacrifices. Matter of fact, for Colby Bryant, make a sacrifice. Go to an extra mass today. Pray an extra rosary for his repose of his soul. Jesse, last thing I got to ask you, brother. What state should you be living in, brother? Let's live in the state of grace. Don't live in the state of mortal sin. And uh, America, wake up, man. Don't hit the snooze button. Jesus is coming back. And when he comes back, ask yourself, are you ready? And ask yourself this question. Are you ready for the global warming when he comes back? Because there will be global warming for some people when he comes back. That's just how it works. And again, I want to encourage you. To pray, make sacrifices, especially for sinners. And mom, dad, the kids, we all can participate in the salvation by uniting our actions to the uniting of our suffering of Christ to help redeem the world. We're up next with Dr. Ma- Dr. Ed Maza is up next on the, ter- on the Virgin Most Powerful. Thanks again, and God bless you and your family. Oh, my Jesus, I beg thee on behalf of the whole church, Grant it love and the light of thy spirit, and give power to the words of priests, so that hardened hearts might be brought to repentance and return to thee, O Lord. Lord, give us holy priests. Thou thyself maintain them in holiness. O divine and great high priest, 
May the power of thy mercy accompany them everywhere and protect them from the devil's traps and snares, which are continually being set for the souls of priests. May the power of thy mercy, O Lord, shatter and bring to naught all that might tarnish the sanctity of priests. For thou canst do all things. Amen. Virgin Most Powerful, pray for us.